Off we go again. This game, I'm back to the new Brea deck, post banless Brea deck versus Kalia of the Vast. Not too problematic of a commander, and actually, it's one of the it's one of the generals that Brea really shines against, mainly because if you if you're on the player, if you get a reasonably fast start, you can get Brea out of turn before they hit Kalia, and Brea, of course, can sack two Thopters, trivial to just blow her out of the air. And then she costs six, and then she costs eight, and then they're not really doing anything. Unfortunately, my opening draw is just absolutely useless. One blue-white land and an Imperial Seal. You can see another card that was added to this deck relatively recently for the life game consideration. I actually had this in the in the uh, regular deck before the, the ban list changed, just because life game seemed like it was really important. I was already running the uh, Stoneforge, Stoneforge Mystic, and Batter Skull was just pretty amazing. All around pretty amazing and is even better now in the format with 30 life and a lot more aggression. Um, yeah, so I'm mulliganing this hand and I mulligan into another one land hand that I definitely cannot keep given that it's completely useless. I gotta mulligan this another time. At least he mulligan once. And this hand doesn't really look better than the last hand, but it does have one key component and that's remand. I've got remand and power stone along with. The ability to scry and in my estimation i feel like this hand is just slightly better than what i'm likely to get with four cards i figure if i can hit a land in the top two the remand will dig me in another card deeper and if i can get to three land then i can play the power stone which deploys the future site and so on so i'm going to go with it he actually mulliganed five as well so we're both mulliganing and of course there was uh actually i don't remember if i sorry click through that too quickly Glanced away. But I think I had a land on top, so I'm just keeping it. This place land. Yeah, I just polluted Delta right on schedule. All right, just like that. Looking good. He doesn't do anything. It's not looking a little worse because he didn't play something for me to remand, but maybe I'll get lucky. Perfect. Another fetch land right off the top. The deck just absolutely delivered right there. I'm going to play Warren Power Stone because it's now way, way stronger of a turn three play than Trinket Mage. It didn't used to be, of course. But now that Trinket Mage doesn't have great targets, it's definitely stronger. Yeah, we didn't even have uh, one Power Stone in this deck, actually, um, until until the new ban list. It just wasn't wasn't worth it. Bojukabog, all right, take my two dual lands. It's very interesting. That actually telegraphs to me also that he probably doesn't have a fourth land in his hand, which means I may not even have to worry about Kalia next turn. And I draw steam vents right off the top. And this is this is a situation. I just need to pause for a sec. This is one of the reasons why I really, really, really love Brea. The fact that if you look at other control decks, like imagine I'm playing the Aloro deck, hypothetically. Obviously, I wouldn't have a steam vents. But imagine I'm playing the Aloro deck, and I want to tap out and cast Future Sight. So I do that. I tap out and cast Future Sight, and then there's something like a land on top. There's something reactive. And then the next card is also a land, or maybe it's a counterspell. And my opponent casts Kali of the Vast. Now, what the hell do I do? I, I mean, I've got an Aloro in play, but the Aloro can't interact with the Flyer. And if Kalia the Vast attacks once, there's things it can put into play that literally just kill you on the spot. So, unfortunately, even though I have this dominant mana position, I would be forced to just do nothing. I would have to just sit there with my dumb Aloro gaining life and waiting for my opponent to either let me counterspell the Kalia so that I didn't have to worry about it right away, or I'd have to wait to draw something good. And against a a commander as threatening as Kalia, and there's lots of other commanders that are just like that, that if they exist for really one turn in play, you can lose to them. Um, I would be forced to just do nothing. But because Bray is so amazing, I know that I can play the future site right here, and even if he plays Kalia on his next turn, even if he's got that fourth land, it's trivial. I can just play Bray and blow it up and move on. So amazing. So I'm going to play the future site because of that. Winter Orb shows up already. We will see you soon, I'm sure. Play my tap land, say done. So at this point, what does my opponent do, right? I've got Future Sight in play. He's got to deal with that. And even if he's got a fourth land, he can't just play Kalia now because I just play Brea, sack two Thopters, kill off his Kalia, and then he needs to uh, he needs to draw two more land to replay. And then I just play Brea again and kill it a second time. She's just so amazing. So instead of that, he plays a Voice of All. Tapping out, too, with me showing Winter Orb on the top of my deck, and he chooses blue. Of course, it's totally irrelevant. I draw Wasteland off the top. I'm going to play the Winter Orb. I'm going to play Trinket Mage since there's a useless land on top, and that's going to fetch a Mox Opal. 
which is now probably the best choice to get in this situation. <laughs> so freaking Imperial Seal on top of my deck to make it even more disgusting. I cast that. And get Gilded Lotus to be put on top, which I can play next turn. And I've still got the Reman, and he's trapped under Winter Orb, and all he's got is this dorky 2-2 flyer. And my opponent immediately does the wisest thing, which is concede, of course. And uh, even though this wasn't a particularly close game, I thought it was uh, it was worth including, not only because it's a showcase of the new Brea deck, but also it was just a um, kind of very textbook example of how well this deck can still flourish in the new format, especially when, uh, especially considering a double mulligan as well. This was, <laughs> if you can believe it, this is like turn five or six of a double mulligan game. So it still has a lot of a lot of core synergy and degeneracy, and it's still very, very viable. Hope you guys enjoyed that game. I've got some much more closer and contested ones coming up.